Welcome back. You're live with Express. I hope your week has gotten off to a flyer. Likewise, some of the South African franchises, in fact, all of the teams in a bumper weekend of Super Rugby. Um, and of course, we've seen the Proteas continue to march on with now a 2-1 lead in the series against New Zealand. And joining us is Garen Lamley from Sports24 to unpick just a little bit of the action. <clears throat> Garen, I know there's so much we could focus on this weekend. <clears throat> Excuse me, you see how excited I get about the sports and the return of Super Rugby, but we are going to focus on that because it, it was a big weekend. An opportunity opportunity for the South African franchises to announce their arrival and definitely a step up on skills level and I think in professionalism from a couple of the franchises. The big one, the Derby match, Stormers Bulls, the Stormers looking pretty sublime. A couple of silly mistakes in the second half but ultimately all of the, the pre-season hype they've made mm. good. Absolutely. I was very impressed by the Stormers' performance. You know, they've got a few foreign coaches in the mix this yeah, year. Yeah, you can tell. You know, um, I think everyone was looking at the Lions to go one better than last year when they reached the final but lost that match. But it seems like the Stormers could be the South African team to watch this year. Put in a fantastic performance at home, it must be said, against the Bulls. A 24 0 lead at half time. Even though they leaked, I think, four tries in the second half, there was no coming back for the Bulls. So they've got a little bit of work to do because they pr look pretty good in preseason, it must be yeah. said, as, as well. So they could still be in the mix come, you know, the playoffs. Big physical side with a couple of Springboks in the mix there as well. And speaking of our Springboks, mm. I thought Sia Khaleesi, obviously he wears his captain's badge really well. I thought he played brilliantly. And Peter Steff to toy, Titanic as man of the match. Fantastic. You know, Peter Steff just goes from strength to strength. Fantastic performance. Still very, very young, early in his career. Khaleesi, as you said, named the uh, Stormers captain this year. Led by example. You can't ask for more from, from your skipper. Um, I think a lot of pressure on the Lions as we turn mm. to the other South African derby up against the Cheetahs. Cheetahs going with the young side, maybe responding to their, their unbeaten season as, um, in the Curry Cup. And they played well. They, they really did make hard work for the Lions. Mm. In fact, a, a couple of standout moments. But the Lions, um, I think people expected that momentum from last season to just continue. Maybe not so much. Not so much. I, I think the, the problem the Lions might have this year is that they didn't. a lot of their players didn't really have an off-season. They went to Japan straight after the Curry Cup haven't had a break, it might come back to haunt them later on in the season. But as you said, the Cheetahs on the back of their Curry Cup victory last year, at home, tough team to beat. You know, they'll certainly upset a lot of teams in Bloemfontein this year. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be on Saturday for them. The Lions sneaking a late try to take the victory there, the four points. Cheetahs picking up a losing bonus point. They're certainly not out of the mix. You know, expect big things from them this year as well. I'm sure they'll start beating the South African franchises <laughs> when we desperately don't need them to do that at the end of the season. Now, they, they really did put their hands up. Um, and then I thought, um, just looking through some of the other results, of course, the Sharks narrowly uh, losing out to the Reds. I mean, they could have won it. Absolutely. You know, they led for large parts of that game. Unfortunately, Pat Lambie missed the one kick that he missed the entire match. Would have given them the victory. You know, they played against 40 men a couple of times. They, they've still got a few issues, I think, to work out. They were outscored four tries to two. But you start your, your campaign on the road in Australasia. You know, if you can pick up a win or two there, then you head back to Durban to play most of your remaining matches at home. It can only bode well for you. But unfortunately, they, like you said, they went down, did pick up again an, a losing bonus point. They've got to beat the Lions in their, in their conference in order to top it and, and get a home um, quarterfinal. But again, you know, early days, week one of, I think, 16 or so. It's a long, long way to go. Campaign, you know, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then we'll just tip our hats, of course, to the protests, looking unbelievably dominant in that third um, mm. ODI. Uh, it's beginning to, to look a little less equal um, down in um, New Zealand. And of course, AB de Villiers, I think, making all the right choices. And of course, batting through to the end, um, I think certainly helped us, but a massive win there. And I think we've got this series. I think we've got this one, but what, exactly what we want going into the ICC Champions Trophy as well, this kind of dominance. Garen, thank you so much for joining us Thanks this morning. Much, um, I understand you were at a wedding, so I hope that was <laughs> wonderful and you were able to, to watch a little bit of sport in between. Uh, but you can let us know what you thought of our South African franchise's performances in Super Rugby this weekend on our Expresso Morning Show Facebook page.